Hallelujah. Boy, oh boy. I tell you what. The Lord is good. And I tell you what. This little devotional today must be powerful devotional. Something that needs to be said. I can always tell that when all kinds of stuff starts happening before the broadcast. Hallelujah. But the Lord is good. His holy blood covers. He has already defeated the enemy and all of his minions and all of his plans. And his end is in the lake of fire. Hallelujah. 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 Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will anoint this message to pierce the hearts of the listener, Lord, that they will hear the word and they will apply the word and they will obey the word, Lord, in Jesus' name. Now, this is a very serious message today. Very serious Because all through the word of God, the Lord speaks of his people mingling with the heathen, mingling with the wicked, mingling with the worldly. And the end of it was always judgment. All through his word. He's very serious about this subject, although many of his people are not serious about it, but he wants them to get serious about it. The name of this devotional, they were yet ready to go to school to the filthy Canaanites. This is by Charles Spurgeon. Let's go over to Psalm 106.35. Now the Lord very serious right here talking about his people but were mingled or they were intermixed in other words among the heathen and they learned their works in other words they learned their actions and started acting just like them and doing what they did and that's how it works When you have mixture and you are mingling, that's how it works. You start doing what they're doing and acting like they're acting. I want to read this commentary, Albert Barnes, on this scripture. But we're mingled. Now, keep in mind, this is God's people right here. God's people. But we're mingled among the heathen. Among the nations by intermarriage and by commerce. They suffered them to remain in the land contrary to the command of God. And thus greatly exposed and endangered the purity of their religion and their own morals. And that's how it works. You can't get into mixture and mingle with what God has commanded not to be part of and expect not to be tainted by it. (laughs) It doesn't work like that. They learned their works. They learned their practices, their customs, their habits. They learned to live as they did. This was an illustration of the danger of contact with the wicked and the worldly. Now, this is chumming up kind of contact, not preaching the word to them, not speaking the word to them. Witnessing. It's not talking about that. It's talking about chumming up and being just... Just like you are with one of God's true people. You can't be in fellowship with darkness if you are in the light. They learned their practices, their customs, their habits. They learned to live as they did. 
I'm going to read this again. This was an illustration of the danger of contact with the wicked and the worldly. What occurred in their case has often occurred since in the history of the people of God. That the mingling with the world, they have learned to practice their works. They have become conformed to their manner of living and have thus lost their spirituality. That's what happens. That is what happens. And we can always tell when that's happening by the change. There's a change that comes over people when they get into the wrong crowd. The wrong way. Not a way that they were brought up and taught by the Lord. You can always tell. There's always a change that starts taking place. And just like in the garden. With Adam and Eve. They hid from the Lord. Why is that? Because they knew they had done wrong. They knew they were in a wrong way. They knew sh they shouldn't have listened to that serpent and do what do what they did. They knew that. So they hid from him. That's exactly what happens today. You will see people start moving away. Moving away from fellowship with the true. Because they got another crowd over here. A mixture. This is so true, what this is saying right here. It's just so true. They conform to their matter of living and thus have lost their spirituality and brought dishonor on the cause of their religion, their walk, in other words, with the Lord. There is some proper sense in which the people of God are not conformed to the world. Now this is what Jesus did. Though living among them. Though living among the heathen. Or the wicked. They are to be separate from them. In which. Though they are parts of the same nation. And live under the same government and laws. They are to be. Now listen. A distinct and special people. Ruled supremely by higher laws. What kind of laws? Heavenly laws. The law of the Lord Jesus Christ. And having higher and nobler ends of life. In other words, their end is not like the heathen. It's not like the mixture. It's not to get ahead in this world or to have a reputation in this world. We have a higher, nobler end of our life. Now, this devotional. They were yet ready to go to school to, to the filthy Canaanites. Now, you keep in mind, we're talking about God's people here, okay? When they settled in the land of promise, Israel found evil company and delighted in it. Those whom they should have destroyed, they made their friends. Having enough faults of their own, they were yet ready, <laughs> they were yet ready to to go to school to the filthy Canaanites and educate themselves still more in the arts of iniquity. Now I tell you what, the people of God, the true Israel, better pay attention to this heeding warning and heed it. This is not funny business with God. Over and over in his word. He destroyed. Because of this. Because of this very thing. Because of this mixture and mingling. Which he forbade. Forbade them to do. It was certain. That they could learn no good. From men whom the Lord had condemned. To utter destruction. 
Israel sat at the feet of a cursed Canaan and rose up proficient or skilled in every abomination. This, too, is a grievous but common error among professors. We see it all the time. We see it all the time. We see it all the time with the people of God. This mixture, this mingling. And from what we read in the word of God, it always kindled the anger of God when it took place. God's a very jealous God. They court worldly company and they copy worldly fashions. And yet, it is their calling to bear witness against these things. None can tell what evil has come to the church because of the folly of worldly conformity. If someone is the same as they were before, before they got saved, quote unquote, got saved, then they're most likely not saved. Because a true conversion will bring change to a person's life. It will bring change. And if they're the same as they've always been, then the fruit of that is they're not really saved. God changes people. He gives them different want-tos. They don't want to do the same things they used to do. They don't want to go to the same places they used to go to. They don't even want to dress the same as they used to dress. Or talk the same as they used to talk. There's a total 180 difference that takes place. And the Lord condemned time after time when his people insisted on mingling with the heathen and the wicked. Even in marriage. Even in business. <laughs> He's not playing around, you guys. He said, come out and be separate. And he means you better come out. And you better be separate from this world. So you're not going to partake of the sins and the plagues. Now this is another warning. We've given so many warnings over the years to come out and be separate. This is a warning and I feel the intensity of the Lord God Almighty come out of her. My people and be Ye separate, saith the Lord. They court worldly company and copy worldly fashions. And yet it is their calling to bear witness against these things. None can tell what evil has come to the church because of the folly of worldly conformity. Let's go over to Psalm 106, verse 36. And they served. In other words, they were a servant to their idols, their images, which were a snare. Now you look at this. Noose. That's what that word means. They were a snare, like a noose. Unto them. Like a noose around their neck. It's a snare. Wow. Do I ever feel the intense warning of the Lord in this deal here. Man. And they serve their idols of gold and silver. Wood and stone. The works of men's hands. Senseless creatures. Which are nothing. And bring grief and sorrow to the worshipers of them. They serve their idols. The idols of the Canaanites. 
who were dispossessed of their land for their idolatries and other sins. And these Israelites were put in their place. You see what God did? And then they served those which they were ordered to destroy. Once again, disobedience of God's people. They who knew the true God, whose servants they were, or ought to have been, and professed to be, and were so called, and yet served the idols of the nations driven out before them, which were a snare unto them. Either the Canaanites were, who were left in the land with whom they mixed and whose works they learned. These ensnared them and drew them into idolatry. Or the idols they worshipped, which were the cause of many evils and calamities. Listen, which were the cause of many evils and calamities. Or the act of serving and worshipping them. They were by these means like a bird or a beast in a snare. And brought into trouble and distress. Out of which they could not extricate themselves. Pretty serious, isn't it? They were fascinated by the charms of idolatry even though it would bring misery upon their vows of their devotion unto God. A man cannot serve sin without being ensnared by it. It is like pitch. And to touch it is to be beslimed by it. Is to be slimed by it. Now, a true child of God, when they do that and they mixture in there, there's a feeling of slime. I've been slimed like this mud is all over me and I'm just slimed. Well, what are you doing in it then for? What are you hanging around it for then? What are you intermingling with it then? You better come out and you better be separate. saith the Lord. Samson laid his head. You better listen to this. Samson laid his head in the Philistine woman's lap. But before long he woke up shorn of his strength. And that's what it does. Depletes you of your strength. Of your strength of the Almighty God when you intermingle. Toying with sin is fatal to holy living. Heed this warning, child of God. You heed it and you come out of her, my people. Come out of the mixture. Come out of the intermingle group. In Jesus' name, amen.